Hi, I'm Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Since 2009, I've taught machine knitting on YouTube. I have over 240 videos and over 7 million views. If you have a knitting machine, visit my channel. I simplify. I teach the basics. I come up with fun techniques and patterns. If you've never seen a knitting machine, visit my channel. This is a little known but very interesting hobby. We make wonderful things. I love to hand knitting, but knitting machines are a whole different endeavor. You will be amazed at what machine knitters make and how good it looks. This is the first time I've ever done a non-knitting video. No worries, subscribers. I have many more machine knitting videos, patterns, and ideas. And I even have a cool idea to address some of our machine knitting seminars being canceled. I've been in lockdown like everybody else. The machine knitting seminars I was preparing for were canceled. As I cleaned out some cupboards and drawers, I decided to deal with some old UFOs, unfinished objects, in this case unfinished quilt blocks and tops. Finishing them would be way more fun than cleaning out cupboards and drawers. I am good at piecing an applique, but getting from a quilt top to a quilt was not my strong point. I actually had a wonderful time finishing those quilt UFOs. Now, I tied some of my UFO quilts, I machine quilted some of my UFO quilts, I bound some quilts, and I finished off some the way I'm showing today. This finish is fast and easy on my regular non-quilting sewing machine, and it looks terrific. Even the corners and backs look great. I decided to teach it to y'all because this is a very good looking, efficient, way to go from an unfinished top to a finished quilt. Here is one of the quilts I finished this way. Basically what I did was I used the fabric that's the backing to do the edges around the quilt. Here's a mitered corner and I figured out a really easy way to do it. I think you're just going to love it. Here's today's scrappy quilt top and I had a great time making this and I still haven't used up all my pink scraps. Go figure. Now, once you've got your top, what you need to do is cut batting. And what you need is you need a piece of batting that's a little bit bigger than your quilt top. I just laid the quilt top on the batting and crawled around it on the floor and cut it bigger. You're going to cut it bigger and trim it later. And the other thing you need is your back. And I laid my quilt top on this back, and I crawled around it, and I cut it about three inches bigger on every side. So that's six inches bigger if you are doing it by measuring. This is also going to be trimmed, but taking that trimming approach reduces the chance that I'm going to ruin this. Now I need to make my quilt sandwich. The bottom layer of the quilt sandwich is the quilt back and put the outside of the fabric, put it down. So it goes down against the table and you want it completely smooth. You need to iron this before you start working on it. Then the next thing to put on is the batting. The batting is a little smaller than the backing. and. I'm going to fiddle with the batting until it's centered and smooth. I have put the top on now and smoothed and smoothed and measured and measured. I can't just do this by eyeballing. I need at least two inches. So I've got a quilting ruler and I've gone all the way around it to make sure I have at least two inches. I'm going to use every bit of that two inches in the binding. I've got my box of safety pins. I'm going to protect my island by putting an old rotary cutting mat under the quilt. These medium safety pins are my favorites for quilting because they are thin enough to slip through the fabrics easily and they're big enough to be easy to handle. Now lots of people stick the layers together using fusible batting or they use a spray glue or they use glue sticks, but I am just using good old safety pins because 
I played with some of these other things and I still like the pins. I guess I'm used to them. Just go in shallow and lift it up. Once it comes through the fabric, what I use the spoon for is to lift up the tip so that I can easily close it and not have to pick at those little tips. After a while my fingers get sore and I used to put in more pins than I really needed. What I do now is pins about every six to eight inches apart all the way around the edge and I'll probably put two pins in each block. You want to put pins where you're not going to sew because the pins will be in your way when you sew. So I'm putting pins in the middle all the way around this border because I'm not going to sew in the middle of the border. I'm going to stitch here and I'm going to stitch here. So I'll have pins close enough to there for it to work. Now in these units I am not going to stitch in the center of this colored area of this individual block. So I'm going to put a pin there and a pin here. And that will be it for my pinning. I'll have my pinning done once those are in. My pins are in. I've got two pins in each of these blocks, pins around the outside border, and I'm ready to take it to the machine and quilt. Now before I begin to quilt, I do a few things to help myself. First of all, I filled spare bobbin. I tested my stitch. I tested the straight stitch and the wavy stitch because I'm going to use those two stitches. Third, and very important, I installed my walking foot. I always use a walking foot for quilting. It makes a huge difference. And fourth, I actually work in an end of my dining area, so I don't have a special studio or a special table. I have a very nice sewing cabinet, and I have yanked it out from the wall by over a foot. That gives me some room back behind for the quilt to go. I'm putting on these glamorous beat up rubber gloves. I think they're Nalgene. They've got lots of little holes in them from sewing and getting torn in use so long. This one has a thumb hole. <laughs> Not deliberate. But what these do is they give me a little traction as I handle the fabric. And then when they get in my way, I just yank them off. And here's my quilt. My first stitching is going to be a straight stitch running down this line. And I'll start in the middle. I've already tested my stitch. Now, the weight of the quilt, even though it's only a baby quilt, becomes an issue. So I use the wad method. I just wad it up over here and put it up in my lap to get some of the weight off the machine. And even though I've got great traction with my hands, I don't yank on the quilt. I just put some pressure on the quilt and just follow it through. I'm letting the feed dogs and the feeders on the top of this walking foot do the work. So off I go and I just keep an eye on it. Don't go too fast because I'm trying to go right in that seam area, stitch in the ditch between the pink and the white. So I'm going to go all the way around the quilt twice. I'm going around on this line and then going around on that line. I'm about to start my second round, but before I did that, I looked on the back. I flipped it over and looked all around to make sure that even though there might be a few little subtle wrinkles, because after all the batting has some thickness, that there weren't any little folded over tucked places, and it's fine. That walking foot really does a good job. So here I go, going to go all the way around the circle of the second side of this white strip. So I'm currently doing my last stitch in the ditch quilting. I actually went back and forth, up and down, in between all these blocks. Then after that, I'm going to do some decorative quilting down the middle of the white stripes, which I think are the prettiest part of the design. So I'll do that next. Um, a couple of things. It's a little too wide for my machine, but I'm using the thin batting, so it's not bad. And I'm just sort of folding it up, wadding it up. I know after all that ironing, it just goes against your instincts to be wadding it up, but you need to keep the weight 
under control so that the machine isn't laboring against the weight. And you need to not pull hard on it either way because you can break a needle and damage your machine. Now I'm going to quilt down the white diagonals. I'm going to aim right down the center of them and I'm going to switch to my decorative stitch. On this old Bernina sewing machine, to switch to the decorative stitch, I'm going to widen the zigzag and move this lever and it goes up to here. This is a 1980s era Bernina Record 930 and it weighs a ton. I don't know if I would ever get it out and use it if I had to lift it. It would require help from someone with more strength than I have. And is just an absolutely wonderful machine. You might wonder why I don't have a fantastic new computerized machine because I do have some amazing knitting gear. But this guy has been such a nice machine for me. It was a luxury when I got it. It's kind of become a family member. I think I would feel disloyal if I ever replaced it. So here I am. I'm started right on this point. I'm going to aim right down the center and I'm using the decorative stitch. I'm going to do this just like I did the other. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I need a little more quilting. I don't want the batting to ever shift. I'm not sure that this polyester batting would shift, but this is going to be a practical everyday quilt for somebody and I want enough quilting to keep it together and not have it move around between the layers. Started in a corner, I'm siding right down the center. I'm trying to keep my presser foot in the middle between those two and here's my stitch wandering across. Love this stitch. This was really useful. It also adds interest if your quilt is very plain like that one that I did that was just a pretty piece of fabric with white borders. I got to a corner and I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees and head on down the next diagonal and look how pretty that quilting is. Here's the quilt back on my kitchen island and I have done all the machine quilting. It really didn't take very long. I went all the way around the square and then I went this way and this way in between all the blocks. Then I did one, two, three, four lines of quilting there and one, two lines of quilting there which did all of these white bands. Now the real test is to flip it over and look at the plain white side because it doesn't really show much on the patterned side. Looking at the plain white side it looks fine. I don't see tucks or extra wrinkles or problems. At this point I can remove all of the safety pins and now it's going to be time to trim. I took all the pins out and it is time to trim. I am not wanting to trim the backing at this point so I am carefully folding the backing underneath and double checking there is no backing sticking up. I'm going to trim away the extra batting. Of course I could have had a smaller piece of batting, but I would rather have a little bit extra so that I don't have a shortage. And I've got a rotary mat under here and a rotary cutter ruler, and I'm just doing it this way. I'm going to do all four sides of the blanket in this way trim it up neatly so the batting comes just to the edge of my edge of my quilt top being very careful not to do anything to the backing the excess batting is trimmed away and carried off to my batting bits bag now i need to trim the back and i want the back to be exactly two inches wider than the border so i'm using my rotary cutting mat and my rotary cutting ruler and I'm measuring out the two inches that I need and then I'm going to just rotary cut that all the way around the blanket and that'll help me to get a nice even binding. Put my quilt out flat and find the very corner of the quilt top and mark that. Just a dot with my pencil is really all I need. Then take my ruler, use the 45 degree line to help me place this ruler at the proper angle. 
and that's pretty good. And then I'm going to mark one and three eighths, a dot, and then a line. And then over here, one and three eighths, a dot, and then a line. It doesn't need to be very dark, but I do need to be able to see it. Boy, a little darker there. The dots are more important to me than the line. So I'm marking all four corners in that way. That gives me a stitching line for those beautiful miters. Here's how to sew a corner. The quilt is face down, the corner facing my right toward the machine. And I fold the quilt this way, and then I take this corner of the front part with the batting and poke it out of the way. Now I've got a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot in the middle. I'm going to use a pin to help me line this all up just perfectly. So, poke the pin from the front to the back, that would be the back of the quilt, and then bring it up through the other spot, back to the front, and holding those two together, hold them together like that. That pinches the quilt together exactly in the two spots that have to match up. And then, holding that with your fingers, go ahead and pin it. And there's a faint line to sew on, so that makes it really easy to navigate. Now, this goes under the presser foot. I want a slightly shorter stitch size. I go forward a little, then I back up a little to reinforce. Get near the pin, pull the pin out. Sew right toward the edge. Then back up a little and sew right off the edge. That's my little miter seam. Look on the back, it should match up pretty darn close. That looks good to me. And I'll go ahead and do the rest of the corners. I'm back in the kitchen with my quilt. I've got myself a little point turner. And I'm going to turn one of these in. Give it a little help, gently, gently with point turner. And there's my miter. Now I'm going to poke the quilt into that little miter hole. Now I'm not trimming it. I'm just poking all that extra fabric down in there and then poking the quilt in there. I could trim it, but I don't feel like it. If I don't like one of my corners, if I didn't trim, it's easy enough to pick out that stitching and stitch it again and do a better job. Now, along here, this is really simple. I'm just going to fold this back. Kind of get it even. It's doubled, so with it being doubled, it's a nice bright white against all those different colors. And I'm just going to pin it occasionally. This is just going to be top stitched with the walking foot installed. You want the walking foot because this edge is padded. Now down this row, same idea. I'm just going to tuck this in. Tuck it in to where it matches where it goes. There we go. So down this side, same thing, I'm going to go down this side, tucking this in, and pinning. I'll go all the way around the quilt, tucking and pinning, and then come back and show you how that looks. I have pinned the quilt the whole way around. I didn't press this, I eyeballed it to get it as even as I could. Now I'm going to top stitch it with a straight stitch and the walking foot working from the right side. I'm getting lined up to start sewing. This is my favorite part of the whole quilt. When I do it this way, I feel like it's idiot proof. I'm just going to top stitch along here, and I've got a certain way that I line it up with my walking foot. Yours will be different, and a way that I put my needle in position to get a good top stitch, and that I'm just going to Hold the quilt with both hands and control it. Make sure that the weight doesn't become a problem. Remove the pins before I get to them. 
you know that because you didn't fold a binding around the quilt that your stitching on the back is going to look great. It's not going to miss the mark anywhere. And since you're working from the right side, you can see exactly where to stitch. So I'm going to come on around. When I get to the corners, I'll stop with the needle down and pivot. I'll sew that around and we'll look at our finished product. Can you see how beautifully my top stitch is going right along the very edge there? And I'm getting that just by picking a spot on my foot and lining it up with this edge of this white binding. I just threw it up over the sewing machine so I could show it to you. It's finished and I love it. It looks good, the corners look good, the front, the back. I keep finding little threads to trim and I'm amazed I didn't find any more safety pins to remove. But this is finished. It took less than a day, even though I was filming. It's not even late in the day. So try this method. It's a great way to get simple, practical quilts together so that they look really nice and they can get on their way to the intended recipient.